Kids, come on up. Simon taking some water like he's gonna get a drink, like he's gonna do a lot of talking. He should bring up water for me, but I know we got more kids. You guys don't want to come up? You guys bring a toy? Man, what toys in church? How things have changed. World's gonna end. There's toys in church. Come on, let me see. Now, I asked this week, you guys can come up. I won't bite. This is the first time I've seen you. Ask Lola. I said, I don't bite until the 10th time. After that, then, then all bets are off. And what's your name? What's your name? Tristan. Tristan? And? Kenley. Kenley? No, Kenley. 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 Well, not close enough though, right? Can we? Oh, can we? <laughs> Meanwhile? Okay. That's okay. That's okay. I've been called lots of things. So I asked you guys to bring in some toys. I asked you to bring in the most, the most favorite toy that you got as a gift, as long as it's a toy, not an animal. Not a cat person. Sorry. So what'd you, what'd you bring, Lola? I brought a picky pop. A what? Toys were so much more simple when I was a kid. You had a block and a truck, a pick me pop. Is that what you said? What language is that? Pick me pop. Okay. That's the pick me pop. Oh, that's the pick me pop. Does, does, do you lick it? No, it smells. It's, well, I smell too, but I don't know if you could call me a pick me pop. You should come by when, after I get done mowing the lawn. Boy, there's a smell for you. Oh, it's a bracelet. Oh, so it has a function. All right, what'd you bring? What did you bring? Oh, I love minions. I hope my phone is silent because if anybody, that's yours. So he's, it's on loan. Oh, that's his. So do you like minions? Whenever somebody sends me a text that's a minion laughing, I, I, I get laughed at when people send me texts. I like minions. What did you bring, Simon? A cheetah. A cheetah. And what's a cheetah? Why is it your favorite gift? Your grandma gave you that. So, you know, the gifts that they're given to us, right? What happens to that gift in, say, a gazillion years? Like when you're as old as mom and dad. How, what happens to your pick-me-pop? What's going to happen to that pop when, when, when you get old like mommy and daddy? It's still going to smell. It's still going to smell? I don't know if it's going to smell the right way. Well, what else? Do, do, you, think, do you think it'll make it dirty? No, you're going to keep it clean that whole time? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be just like you bought it? Or you think, I don't know, man. That's not I, what... I got it from McDonald's. You got it from McDonald's? So we know that's going to last a long time, right? <laughs> what, what What about over here? What's going to happen to that minion? You think that minion's going to get... You think you'll, you won't lose it, will you? See, what are one of the things I want to talk to you about is a gift that we all get. When we, when we follow Jesus, we have a gift that never, ever fades. It never gets... Hold on, let me see that cheetah. I don't think cheetahs are supposed to be brown, are they? Was this yellow at one point? That looks pretty dirty. It's not? I don't know. Does this, I don't want to smell it. I don't want to smell it because it might smell real. You want to smell it? Anybody else want to smell it? No? I didn't think so. But see, our gifts, sometimes they get lost. Sometimes they get dirty. Sometimes they get rusty. I had these old cars that got rusty. And I gave them to my son and he's like, well, what are these? Dukes of Hazard cars, the Matchbox cars. Remember when you got them when you were little? Man, I loved it. I had the little two little police cars and, 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 and Daisy's Jeep, and they're all rusted and the wheels don't turn anymore. So that's what happens with earthly gifts. And one of the things that we're going to be talking about with moms and dads today is how we get a gift that never fades, that never loses its tarnish, that never gets lost. It lasts forever and ever and ever. And you guys can have that gift too. All you gotta do is ask for it. It's kind of cool, isn't it? And it doesn't, you don't have to wait for Christmas. You don't have to wait for your birthday. We have one birthday this month. We have a couple birthdays out there. Should we embarrass the, the, the big people with their birthdays? I've already got my check, so I can do that to the person who writes the checks. No, no we'll do that. But I'm gonna pray over it before you go back. Um, and you make sure that you get your bulletins. Do does anybody have a God signing today? The memory verse from last week? 
That's okay. I got. I you do. Yeah. I'm the father of a John Henson. Wow. Very good. We've got some memory verses on those on those bulletins and some activities for you to to color and mazes and, and word search and that kind of that stuff. So have fun with those during the sermon. But before you go, we're going to pray over you. Father, we thank you so much for these littles. We ask that you bless them and protect them and keep them. We ask that the seeds that we plant today present a fruitful harvest in the future, a harvest that only you can control. Lord, we know that you love these little children. You said to bring them to me. So, Lord, we bring these children to you. We lay them at your feet. And we, we beg for, their, for your blessing over their lives. We ask that you watch over moms and dads, aunts and uncles, grandmas and grandpas. Whoever is in, in charge of their well-being, you bless and keep them. Give them the wisdom and how to steer and teach their children in the ways of the Lord, that when they get old, they will not depart from it. We ask these things in your name. And all God's kids said, Amen. Amen. You guys can maybe dismiss. Make sure you get your little bulletins. Bring back your memory verse and a God signing. I might have a special treat for you. Hope is what we have when we bring our sermon up. I'm sure there's a lot of parallels throughout this nation, throughout the globe, actually, from pulpits all over the world. There's too much happening right now that strip hope from our lives, right? You know, and one of the things that I struggled with was, what do we do when we come back from this self-containment? There are still, as we as we as we have proof of with our digital stream, there are people that, for whatever reason, are not feeling comfortable going out in the public, and that's okay. But what do we do when, no matter where you turn, you 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 can't find hope? You lost how. Is in the world can we actually have hope? Because everything we look at, and everywhere we look, it's stripped from our lives. How is it possible that we can hope individually? How can we start to think about hope when we're at each other's throats? As a society, we've lost the, we've lost the how to our why. If you remember when I first came here, when I actually interviewed, that was my very first sermon. I got to preach that sermon a few times throughout the country, but it's the how or the why to our what. All the different what's that we do have to have a why. What I do is being a pastor in my vocation. Why I do it is because he has called me to do so. Why I do it is so that maybe somebody somewhere along the line will decide, hey, I want to have that relationship that they've got. But how? See, we, we, we start off this year in James going through the hows of what the gospel looks like and living faith in a day-to-day -day basis. Peter himself addresses this in his first, lead, his first letter. He starts off, starts off with an extremely long statement. That statement after his, hey, I'm Peter, and this is who I'm talking to. He crafts this long, drawn-out statement. Now, Generally, when we do that, if I had this long, drawn-out statement, I'd probably lose half of you. We see it as bloated in our society, don't we? Man, he just won't shut up. If you uh, think anything different, try watching court TV on an actual court hearing when they have their opening statements. Can we just get it started? They used to televise those when certain football heroes or football stars took really slow speed chases on the interstates and I don't know if you, the opening statement last days. We can get a long drawn out statement in today's society. It's an act of being bloated and, and uh, elevating ourselves above the, the audience that's listening. See, but back in that time, when you had a long drawn out statement, it was well crafted. You, it denoted that you were well, highly educated, that you were well respected in your community. Peter gives that. He wasn't educated. He's a fisherman. The fisherman transformed and changed by the Holy Spirit. We're only going to look at the first three verses, so you don't have to worry about it. 
I, I initially had the first three verses and a few more verses, and I was like, no, that's way too much. Man, they'll, they'll be here through Tuesday. We don't want that. <laughs> well, we'll be in the sermon through the, the whole time where the actual weather is nice and, and tolerable outside. This was sincerity from the heart. His words were chosen on purpose. And when I think of a wordsmith, I think of, I think of John. John did that. John picked his words very purposely. Well, so did Peter in his first letter. We're looking, if you have God's word, 1 Peter 1, 3 through 5. I would ask you to stand in reverence for reading of the word. Um, even if you're at home, I invite you to stand out of respect for the word of God. Let's read his word. And we're reading out of new, the New American Standard. Blessed be the God of the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope. Can you guys say living hope? Living hope. Wow. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away is reserved in heaven for you who are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. This is the word of our Father. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your word. I thank you for the promise of your word. I thank you for the fact that it's not just a hope, it is a living hope. Lord, I ask that you soften our hearts as we look into this word deeper. Speak to us in where we are at. Speak to that teenager who is scared to come out of a room or their room. We speak to that person who is belittled because of where they stand, because of maybe the skin color or, or what where they come from. Lord, I, I ask that you reach that person in their living room who's scared to leave their living room today. Lord, I, I, I pray for that person who, who is facing unknown circumstances in the weeks ahead. Talk to us today. Mold us and shape us. Only way that you can do through your word. We ask these things in your name, in Jesus' name, and all God's kids said again, amen and amen. You may be seated. Boy, I looked at this one and, you know, as a children's pastor, a prior children's pastor, I guess you can say, that first word really hits a note. Blessed. The first thing that came to my mind were the Beatitudes. Um, and it's nothing like the Beatitudes. It's not even the same word. Boy, there's such a fullness around that, so we're going to start with that, because that was his first word. You know, if we look at bless, there's three ways that we can bless God. Through our heart, the intent, through words confirming that intent, and through deeds, the proof of our intent. See, it's good to note that it's not the blessed of as those beatitudes. It's a totally different word. The verse word was intent on being at, on absolute fullness. It gives us the direction of where Peter was going in this text. We can be, in fact, blessed of the, our Father, our Heavenly Father, in our hearts, in our words, and in our deeds. All three of those together. Three is kind of a famous number in the Word of God, isn't it? This gives a 360 degree coverage on this one term. It's that blessing that we can do to our Father. Boy, sign me up. If I have an opportunity to bless God the Father, boy, sign me up. What did you do today? Well, I'm on the line. Well, what did you do today? I got to bless the Father. <laughs> kind of makes anything and everything out there. I made a million dollars. I bless the Father. But this is what Peter is, is starting off this, this, this message that he's giving his readers and his hearers. It was an instruction to those hearing, blessed to be the Father. One of those hymns, old hymns, came back across to me and bless the Lord all, O oh my soul, and only part that is within me, right? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, all that is within me. We spent some time in James earlier this year where we were interested in how to live out our faith. It starts with that change of heart. We confirm those, 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 what was changed here with our words making those promises and letting our yes be yes as our no's be no's, and then executing in action. I don't know about you, but any time that I'm given the opportunity to bless the Father, 
I'm jumping at it. Boy, I want to jump at it. Jump at it. And I, I forgot to give you this. This whole message has been given to you by the letter B. Do you guys remember that reference? Anybody get that reference? Today, it was a Sesame Through the Street thing. You, you young ones don't know what, what public broadcasting is. This message is brought to you by the letter B. It was funny. I, was, I asked for my daughter to overlook the notes before I sent them off. Because, you know, I already feel bad enough that Miss Mary gets to see all the notes. She gets the, she gets the precursor. She already knows what she's walking into. But uh, my, my daughter, I love her. She's only looking at things face value. She's not trying to look into anything, anything deeper. So I'm like, all right, tell me. Well, you got B at the front of every one of these. Yeah, that was on purpose. What's it mean? I said, you got to come this Sunday. Mentally, too. Now, she's here because I probably brought her here. But she's got to be here mentally. So, okay. But there's a line. Yeah, because there's a word that goes on in that line. The second one is the because. First one was blessed. The second one is because. Why is he giving this message? It's why can we have hope? Because of his mercy. See, some of these versions out there say abundant. It's no little mercy. It's great mercy. Can you guys say great mercy? Great mercy. Great mercy. Uh, I, I rem last week it was one of those full, are you really full of joy? This is that great mercy. It's that little mercy that we have to offer. That's not enough. See, we give mercy on a day-to-day -day basis. Somebody hurts our feelings, we give mercy when we forgive them. But then we bring it up three weeks later. That mercy had a shelf life, didn't it? <laughs> I always thought about that this, day, about this week. I was like, man, it, when we get our feelings hurt, and I'm supposed to forgive, that's why the Bible says we've got to forgive 70 times, seven times, don't we? Because our, our mercy has a shelf life. It has an expiration date. His mercy does not expire. Oh, this dirge mercy was not a small token. It was led to the sacrifice of his one and his only son. And we talked about who that son was last week. He has shown us all that we choose to follow our own paths. I think of last week's examples of Abraham. See, God continued to give his mercy, mercy even after Abraham said, no, I'll take things into my own hands. See, we always look at Abraham as this great big spiritual leader, and he was. But he still made a pretty big mistake. He said, no. God's taking too much time. I got this. I think uh, I equate that with me and my wife. We, we do the same thing. I want to have kids. And doctor said, nope, it's not going to happen. Well, we got this, God. We'll adopt. Show you. <laughs> Didn't work out well for us either. God continued to give us mercy. I remember David who had a child out of wedlock, right? Remember? And I... Uh, there was no mercy on that child, but yet God gave mercy. The timing of that light is just beyond me. God gave mercy to Abraham continually over and over and over, regardless. He even blessed Ishmael, didn't he? Mercy showed the, show, was shown to the argument of Moses and the defiant David. Can you imagine arguing with God and expecting him to give you mercy? <laughs> I can only imagine the arguments I tried to have with my parents. There was no mercy there, boy. Mercy, that wooden spoon was hard. <laughs> but the Lord still had mercy on Moses when Moses said, no, not once, not twice, multiple times. I want you to go free my people. No, but I can't. No, I want you to go there. No, but I can't. I got this excuse. I got that excuse. Argue with God. I don't know about y'all, but if I saw a bush on fire, I would stop arguing real quick. Really quick. We joke that uh, you know, there's some things happening in another state in our union where they're prohibiting and restricting the, the worship of musical tones coming out of your mouth. And I, I said, I, that's a scary thought for me. Because the Bible that I read says that if you don't worship me, even the rocks are going to cry out. And I think of our... our, our, our uh, rock-filled parking lot out here. Imagine walking and driving into work and all those rocks are singing out. Boy, that would scare me. Oh, my goodness. I might have to give my notice real quick. That's the kind of fear that I would have if I just to think about arguing with God. But yet, I did it too. Daryl, I want you to go to ministry. Not until I'm done doing this. I got, I got, I got to play first. 
Oh, no, no, not until I'm done making a million dollars, Lord. I, I, I went to school. I, I'm on that tra fast track. I'm climbing that corporate ladder. Oh, I want you to go to the ministry. Oh, no, I'm really good at this job. Well, watch me take it from you. <laughs> I was really good at a lot of things in my life. Yet, he continued to show me mercy. Boy, the fact that he showed David mercy after what David did. It's just not one, but he had, a, he had like a, a double whopper, right, didn't he? He had a double whopper. It's that same mercy that Titus tells us in chapter 3, verse 5. He saved us not on the basis of deeds, which we have done in righteousness, but according to his mercy. According to his mercy only, by washing of the regeneration and the renewing of, by the Holy Spirit. Let's talk a little bit about that regeneration, which brings us to our third point. That third B, born again. We all like to not hear about that born again. It's a church term. It's a renewed birth. Y'all remember do-overs when kids? I love do-overs. That's like that automatic, okay, I'm not in anymore. Remember playing tag? Do-over! New rule. Do-over! As, as the bigger kid, it's all, I was always it. I don't know why, but I was always it. You'd think that I would have gotten a little smaller, but do-over! That was my saving grace. See, God gives us a do-over. It's that rebirth. It's only because of the resurrection. See how these bees work together? Isn't it pretty? The rebirth is that same that happened on that third day. Christ is the head of the body, the cornerstone of the church. He was alive again. He was alive as day as, as, as bright from night. He was living and breathing again. It was... He granted us that do-over by defeating death. The cost alone that we were granted was, was that we, we ever wished for that do-over. Do you want to do-over today? Are you in the midst of your do-over? Second part about, about that born again is the price that was sufficient. We talked about the sufficiency of Jesus Christ last week. It was what was needed to reconcile man and all of his sin to the Creator. See, we had to be brought back to the Creator. We had to be washed clean. We are the ones that must be reconciled. We must be granted that do-over. We have to get that. The Lord's done it. He's done. He didn't have to because he was perfect to begin with. The whole point of a do-over is so we can get a fresh slate, isn't it, right? Sometimes we need a do-over in relationships. Sometimes we need a do-over in, in life. Sometimes we need to do over in the, the shackles that bind us. And the only thing that's sufficient, me and Brother Don were talking earlier about the, the, the shackles of a certain addiction that I had. And, you know, I took this medication and I got this problem with it. I took this medication and I got this problem with it. it, it was, my do over didn't start until I realized well, the only thing that was sufficient was the great physician. And the only medication that was sufficient was the blood that was shed on the cross. I had to approach for that do-over. We were only, I was only given that do-over because of his great mercy. Because of his great mercy. Why do I bless his holy name? This born again, this do-over leads us to a new life in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Can you all say new Say that again. New. Man, I want people from Tennessee to hear. I want to hear people from Tennessee and Texas say, new creature. New things have come. The old is gone and forgotten. That's why our grace has a shelf life and his does not. It's forgotten. It's gone. As far as the east is from the west, it's gone. We all we'll remember it. I should get a lot of amens from some husbands, boy, because our wives have memories that never quit. If we don't remember it, they will. But what, all you got to do is say, hey, shop, do over. Do over. The old is gone, the new is forgotten. The old is gone and forgotten. We may bring it up. I think one of the biggest things in reality is we are our own worst nightmares. We're our own. We pick at ourselves a lot more than either anybody else does was approached by somebody, a leader in worship, in, in ministry, and, 
And they said, I don't know, I've got a past. You know what? The Lord's forgotten about a past. Let's, why, why don't we do that? Do the same thing. I've got a past. But yet, the only thing that comes to my mind every morning when I'm bowing down to worship and to pray, and I pray over certain um, pastors, fellow pastors throughout this area and throughout the country that I know personally, I pray that his spirit is abounding. But I've got this little voice in my head. Oh, you're, you're not good enough. Remember where you came from? See, God doesn't know that know the voice anymore. It's, it's forgotten. See, the new is here. The old is gone and forgotten. Hebrews 8, 12, and 12 tells us that God tells us that he will remember them no more. I don't know about y'all, but man. We mess up. You ever trip in public? Ain't nobody forget that, do they? <laughs> nobody forgets that. But boy, the Lord forgets it and remembers it no more. Where would this world be like if we started approaching things the way, the same way the Lord does? doesn't mean that other people are going to forget and remember no more, but we can. That thought comes into our head, we can put it right back out. Every morning, every Sunday morning, when I, when I kneel down, I say, Lord, that, that, all right, get that voice out of me. I, I can't handle that. No. Because I know I have the hope that he knows nothing what, what's being said in my ear. If God, if it's not taking any of God's time, why is it taking mine? <coughs> he remembers it no more. The next B is the benefaction. And that's just a big word for birthright. I wanted to be fancy. I used a synonym, synonym look, look her up or on Google. Oh, we, uh, me and Google, we, we write lots of sermons together. It's that birthright. It's the inheritance where our hope is concluded. That living hope that was mentioned in verse 3. It's that birthright, imperishable. Three things about it. It is imperishable. It will not decay. As I talked about earlier, there is no expiration date like there is with our mercy. <coughs> See, our forgiveness may have an, an expiration date. And when we reach it, we forgive again. And we forgive again until we can no longer have to need to forgive it anymore. Sometimes that forgiveness is lies within ourselves. But it's imperishable. It will not decay. There's no expiration date. There's no best if used by date. Well, you want to see some old best of use by dates? Open up any church refrigerator. Ah, I hear some chuckles. Nothing down there now. Well, there might be. I don't know. The first, the first men's meeting we had, and Brother Don's looking through it. Well, we got some mayonnaise in here. It was best of use by 2017. <laughs> I don't know about that one. You know, mayonnaise got some eggs, and I know eggs have a shelf life. Woo! Church like I came from in Florida, and I love them. We had two refrigerators. We'd have to go through and clean it out because some of that stuff was older than my kids. <laughs> it's crazy. There's no, <coughs> there's no imperishableness in our church refrigerators, but there is in the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. It is undefiled. Unlike that, that stuffed animal that's been thrown in the yard, it's been thrown in the dirt, it's been thrown at the dog, it's been thrown at me. It's not perfectly clean. It's undefiled. Israel defiled their inheritance in Leviticus 18.27. This undefiled means it's pure, unsoiled, and unmarked. As great as that toy is for McDonald's, Miss Lola, it is not going to be pure and unsoiled and unmarked. No matter how good we take care of our possessions, sooner or later they become soiled. Sooner or later, they become marked. It's the same way with our sinful lives. We need something that will wash us clean. I, can, I wonder if we can think of any gift that was given to us that was pure or unsoiled and therefore undefiled. I had a joke in here to refer to my wife, but I can't even go there, can I? No. Uh, <laughs> she said, no, she figures it. We fix that. Third thing about this, this, this birthright is it will not fade. It never ends. It's there. It's not only offered. You know, like Christmas morning, it gets there and it's done with. It's over with. Our, our, our birthdays, we make our kids wait till the moment that they were born in the day. Uh, my, my daughter hates it because she was born in the evening, 626 p.m. My son at 10, 11 a.m. So, boy, I tell you what, it's hard for a kid to wait, especially when the kids wake up at like five, 
on their birthdays, if not earlier. And they wait. We make them wait till the, it's fun. We gotta have some kind of fun as a kid. But it will not fade. It will, does not end. See, the end of that their birthday was is the following day, and the, the gifts stop. Right? It, it, when you're when you have Christmas and the 26th comes and everyone's returning everything, the gifts stop. His his hope doesn't stop. It's there over and over and over. It will not end. It doesn't mold. It doesn't decay. It doesn't evaporate. It doesn't dissipate. It will not disappear. I wonder what else we can say that it isn't. Well, let's focus about what it is. It's forever. It's everlasting. Eternity. You know, I did a Google search on eternity. I wanted to see what Google said about that. I was just playing around. You know, the, the top three things are all scripturally based. Huh, even Google's got it right every once in a while. The last B that we want to look at is the benefactor, you. It's for you. I love this, this scripture where it says, you, it's reserved in heaven for you. So point to your partner, point to somebody next to you and say, it's reserved for you. Yes, Don, you got to do it even though it's your boy. <laughs> it's reserved for you. It's for me. It's for you. But the thing about a reservation is you've got to show up. You can have the reservation at, a, at the fanciest of restaurants. If you don't show up, it expires. And that's what happens with our life. We're but a blink on the timeline of eternity. We don't know when our life will end. It comes like a thief in the night. Sometimes we can see it come coming, sometimes we don't. But we have to respond. We have his protection. That's the promise of his hope. And we have his protection. It's only through our faith in him. It will last until it's no longer needed. When will it no longer be needed? Amen. Glory. But we have to respond the benefactor comes with it when it comes with a string attached. You've got to show up to the party. I think of the parable of the the, the wives as, as they are waiting with their with their lamps, and they run out of oil. They miss their they miss their ticket. They miss their chance. They weren't prepared because there is a shelf life. Sooner or later, our lives die. Our lives will soon be passed away. I know this is kind of a downside of looking at it, but the, the hope is his gift is last forever. But it's, it's meant for us. It's meant for you, teenager. Oh, she just looked up. I wasn't even talking about my child. It's meant for you, Lola. It's meant for you, Brother Jack. Yeah, it's even meant for my son who can't keep still. He's got Tourette's with his hands. I'm going to ask you a few questions today before we go into prayer. Are you in the midst of your do-over? Do you need a do-over? Do you need a redo do-over? He does those too. Maybe you want him to realign or recenter. See, I, I, I needed a do-over after being called in the ministry at 11 years old. I party. I looked for good memories. The funny is when you look for memories in a bottle, you tend to forget them. Because you get to the bottom of that bottle, you never remember what happened. Did you have fun? I don't, man, I don't know. My first port of call, I don't remember. I know where it's at. I can't tell you what much of what happened. See, I knew at age 11 I was supposed to be called into ministry. I wasn't 11 when I had my first port of call in the United States Navy. I was 19. I needed that do-over. I'm so glad that he has grace to, to offer that do-over to me. I'm so glad that it was on that list of benefactors. I'm so glad that he meant, that, he meant for that hope, that living hope, that living hope that does not expire, that does not fade, that does not wash away. 
Are you on that list of benefactors? We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. If you feel led, the altars are always open. You don't want to bother you. It's between you and him. If you're watching us online and you want to be part of that benefactors list, all you got to do is ask. That reservation's there and it's made for you. All you got to do is show up. If you want to talk to me, drop us a line. I'll personally return calls. Let's go to him in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for your word and the hope, the fact that it is the living hope. It is an unfading hope. It is an undying hope. It is a hope that does not wash away. It is a hope that is undefiled. It is a hope that will last forever, and it is a hope that is reserved for me. Lord, if anything, I'm praying for that person to have courage to step up and accept that reservation. You died because of me, for to give me that hope. You reserved a spot at your table for me and for everyone watching and listening today. Lord, I ask that you meet people where they're at. Give them the courage to say, yes, Lord, I will, I will pick up my cross and follow you. I want to respond to that reservation. I need that do-over. Lord, we give you praise for the fact that you have grace to grant those do-overs. It's in Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen and amen. A couple things to think about. What, were, what, what would our world look like right now? Your individual worlds, where you work, where you traverse to. If we were to leave those doors with the hope of what it means to have a do-over. What does it mean to have a do-over? What if in a, those that are in our presence question what a do-over looked like and, and they couldn't wait to ask you about it? I got the opportunity to run into one of our, one of our folks in, in, at a local big box retailer shopping with her daughter and it was so evident that they were enjoying each other's presence. It made us think, man, that's what I want when my kids get older. <coughs> What if we walk through those doors and just our mere presence, the hope that is in our lives, was so bright that people went home thinking, man, I want that. In the midst of this crazy, in the midst of the unknown, we can be confident that the fact of treasures are being stored up in heaven, those treasures that do not fade, the treasures that we are the benefactor of. I'm going to leave you with a scripture from Romans 15, 13. Now may the God of hope fill you all joy and all peace in believing so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I love you. I'm praying for you. Until the next time, have a great week.